your permission, because there is one misunderstanding I have found prevalent amongst the entrepreneurs. Uh, when the investor talk about exit, and when the investor talk about multiplying their own investment, the, the misunderstanding that I've come across is that, how can we pay them? Is it uh, not a real risk capital? Do we have to really buy back from where we get this money? How can we really get you the return? So the misunderstanding probably is that it is the responsibility of entrepreneur to pay out of their own pocket to the investor, which probably is not true. The, uh, Dhanpal, may I request you to please clarify this? Nipam, good. I think it's a fantastic question. Yeah, I think we kind of, in our, in our excitement to talk about making money, we actually don't realize how people interpret it across the table. Uh, I think the fundamental issue you've got to think about is, is that when capital comes in, in the form of equity, it is different than, you know, if you go to a bank, take a loan, pay an interest on the loan, and at some point in time, the bank wants the loan back. Here, when the capital goes in the company, it's permanent. Right? Unless you do a buyback of shares, it's permanent capital. It stays inside the company. It never goes out. The only way it goes out is if you pay dividends or if you basically uh, buy back the capital. So the investor, when he's putting in money, he is essentially acquiring shares of a company. And those shares is what he expects, that the value of the company grows by two, three, four, ten times, whatever it is. And the shares that he owns in the company, therefore, go up by that same multiple. And who provides that, right? It's another investor. So if, you know, we talked about exits, right? There was a whole session on exits. It's another investor going into the capital markets where he's selling shares of the company to public uh, investors, or it could be a trade buyer or whatever. So capital, it's permanent, stays inside the business. The only way really you create value for the investor is if essentially shares price goes up. What does that do for you? is that what you own in the company also, the value of your shares in that company also go up tremendously. And I would presume multiple times over, right? Because you would have invested at a much lower you know, valuation, what we call the ground floor. And, and I think that's the reason why we actually took a view that we want to be that promoter here, right? Like yourselves. If you come over there at the ground floor, hopefully we'll make a lot more money. Uh, thank you, Dantar. I think that was a good clarity that we wanted to have. Uh, Anchit, there is a question for you. I think you, I, I really didn't remember exactly. You talked about uh, asking some entrepreneur to leave and what could be the reason for such removal in one of the case study that you talked about. It could be a misunderstanding, I don't know. But did you talk about somebody to leave the enterprise? And if yes, then why? So, Yeah, so I think my, uh, uh, my reference was uh, in, in terms of team building, uh, in terms of saying that when you grow your business, you have to build teams. And when you build teams, you are looking to hire people who you believe will deliver on certain goals. Uh, and that's, that's, that's an art, it's not a science. Uh, you get that right, you get that wrong. Just as it is very important to hire people at the right time to grow your business, it is very important to have the ability to ask people to move on to other things and replace them with people who might do that job better. That is a very difficult task. We are all humans and it's not easy to, to ask somebody to move on and to replace that. But that is, that is what an entrepreneur does. You all do it as entrepreneurs in your businesses. Uh, and, and as you grow, you have, to, you have to learn to even do that at a, at a senior management or a mid-management level. Uh, and that is very intrinsic. Uh, people build businesses, uh, and you have to get the people right. Thank you, Achit. Uh, question to Tarun. Uh, in spite of all efforts, businesses fail. And both the partners, you know, the entrepreneur as well as the investor, may lose money. Um, exit may not be possible sometimes. What happens next in such circumstances? So we just uh, shrug off our shoulders and move on, honestly. Um, it, it is risk capital at the end of the day. We do understand that we are taking equity risk. Um, 
if we do, uh, for instance, as NEA, we do both really venture capital investments very uh, early stage, and we do also early growth investments, which are a little more uh, later in the company's uh, uh, life cycle. So yes, I mean, in, in India, you have to, uh, you, you see the risk. In fact, in early stage, what's called the mortality rate is even higher. Um, so then it is up to us as investors to manage our risk that, look, I should not be putting too much money into a company which, where the risks are increasing, um, or at least I should be managing the risk uh, appropriately. But at the end of the day, yes, companies fail. Um, and if it's uh, failing for the, you know, because of the actual business risk and so on, we do take that risk. We do take write-offs in our portfolio, you know, across the board. Uh, they, I don't think there'll be any fund in India who has not had that experience. Um, but yes, you, we all uh, have to be mature about it, take that risk and move on. Hello, Mahesh, this is the last question I'm able to take uh, due to the short of time that we have. Uh, question to Mahesh uh, is, uh, how do SMEs repay their investors? And then this is uh, uh, further elaborated this way. Worried of being sold out to the major competitors of their own. The, the, the worry of keeping control of your own business. This is again the worry uh, of the entrepreneur. And how much time typically do an entrepreneur would have? And uh, what if the time needed is six to 10 years to build business before it is being sold out? Is that a, 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 a right kind of a time frame uh, which aligns with the investor's interest? And if there is any, uh, that alignment breaks, you know, if they need more time, what would be the approach of the investor? I think it's a valid concern. Uh, you know, all entrepreneurs want to make sure that they continue the journey. And just merely having an investor is not a disruption to, you know, the end goal of what they want to achieve. Uh, I, I think it's a, it's a valid concern, but uh, at the same time, good businesses require capital at varying intervals. And as long as you build a business that has some level of franchise value, as we call it, or lasting value or a competitive, uh, some level of competitiveness in the business, I think that it can be sold to the others. Uh, we've done that in the past. Private, it's, it's not always that it has to be a strategic sale. Um, uh, as long as the founder realizes that he needs to provide an exit and facilitates that process smoothly uh, without, uh, you know, and gives it the best shot, I, I think that an exit is possible, one. Uh, we've done that in the past. I mean, I have, uh, uh, you know, we've sold businesses to other private equity funds. In fact, that's a big source of exit, at least for small funds like us. Uh, you know, firms like, uh, you know, Samara or Everstone are looking for good businesses that are coming out of, uh, uh, small and, and mid-sized firms like ours. We've sold businesses to NEA ourselves. Uh, we've held businesses for anywhere from three to ten years. So it's not that it's always a, a four-year cycle or a three-year cycle or a five-year cycle. I think there are a bunch of things that determine this. If the, if the growth of the business is, and the, the potential is fairly strong, you'll always uh, find the investor staying on for a longer period of time. Uh, we've, uh, we've, I think we've sold to NEA way back in 2000. I think it's six years, and they've uh, continued to hold that business for five, six years. So you, you will see you know, some of those, uh, th those things play out. Uh, so it's, it's, I think the, uh, the two things that are critical, founder needs to be focused on the business, making sure that there's value creation in it. And if there's value to be created, uh, it can't pass from one investor to the other. There are multiple businesses that change hands uh, probably over the last 15 years that have changed hands across three or four private equity funds. And I think that's a continuous journey. Uh, and if the firm is large enough at some point in time for it to list, I'm sure uh, you know, it can list as well. Yeah, sale to competitor, I think there's enough. Generally, this is a discussion that's, uh, that's had up front. Uh, there are safeguards that, that are provided that there's at least a three, four year, five year period where there's no sale to a competitor. Uh, I think those are pre-agreed with every investor. It depends on, on, on what the investor is, is expecting. Uh, I, I, I think while there are some onerous clauses in the uh, share purchase agreements or share subscription agreements, it's not easy for investors to enforce it uh, simply because entrepreneurs are running the business. It's not the uh, investors who are running the business. 
So why those clauses are more deterrent deterrents to ensure that the founders play ball and and give the investor a reasonable exit and are not blocking it or you know are simply turning a blind eye towards the need for an exit and i think those come in 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 uh, rarely uh, in very few cases i don't see that as uh, you know as the norm yeah, thank you mahesh i think uh, uh, we we have gone 20 minutes beyond our uh, session uh, time to exit probably and therefore i will close <laughs> the QA session a little early. But just before closing, one line I would simply add is that, uh, you know, when investors invest with an entrepreneur, they both become partners. And as true partners, both would take care of each other. Their future is locked in together. No one can expect to enrich at the cost of others. I believe that is, that is the essence and the underlying principles of private equity. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you, everyone.